Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. In this how to play video, I'm going to take a look at Shadowbook Shaman. Yes, I have entered the dark side. I have become the bringer of despair. The Shadowbook Shaman is a powerful combo deck that relies on its namesake card, the Shadowbook. Battlecry reveal all other battle cries from cards you played this game. And what you really want to do with this Shadowbook is that you want to play this. And you want to have it make copies of itself. That is why there is Serenai Chengang in this deck. And after it has made copies of itself, you want it to bounce itself back into your hand. Preferably with the Grumble, so that the copy would cost 1. Or alternatively with the Zola, so that the copy will cost 9. And obviously simply making copies and bouncing it back isn't enough. So then you have the Life Drinker, which deals damage to the opponent and heals you. And if you have some life drinkers and you keep bouncing back these copies and boom boom boom, opponent dies, you're at full health. Typically this takes place as a two turn combo. On the first turn you play your nine mana shadow walk, and then you have some one mana shadow walks in hand and you will play ten shadow walks on the second turn for a minimum of 30 damage. All the combo pieces except for shadow walk you can play at any time at your leisure. They don't even have to have any value from the battle cry effect. I will just trigger and then those will be ready in the pool waiting for Shadow Walk. So after you played Crumble, Serenite Chain Gangs, Life Drinker, Zola, you're pretty much good to go. There are also a number of other battle cries in the deck just for funs and giggles. So you can destroy weapons infinitely, you can buff up your minions, you can freeze up stuff. And actually Glacier Shards freeze is often useful because on the first turn when you go, getting some freezes means that you're less likely to die on the follow-up turn than, than you get to do your full combo turn. So that's the basics. However, Shadowbook does not always work that way. Because the order that the battle cries trigger is random. So if you happen to get the Grumble battle cry and the Zola battle cry before any Serenite Chain Gun battle cries, that means that you're not getting any extra copies back into your hand. And that means that you have to win the game some other way. There are plenty of ways to work around this. You can use Grumbles and Zolas on your Serenite Chain Gangs when you play them earlier, so that you get to play more Serenite Chain Gangs, which means that the probability is better for them to go off before the Grumble or Zola. Alternatively, you can Grumble your own Zola, in which case you have a one mana Zola in hand, and then you play Shadow Walk, and if it whiffs, then you can just play Zola to at least get a nine mana copy back into your hand. Or, alternatively, if you are able to pick up Zola or Shadowrock from your far side and discount them by 3, then you will also have enough mana to do that Shadowrock into Zola play. So there are quite a few options on how exactly you want to trigger this. But the key thing to keep in mind is how many Serenade Chain Gangs have you played? How many Grumbles, how many Zolas have you played? What are your rods when you play Shadowrock to get it back into your hand? And if you don't get it back into your hand, what happens then? Will you, for example, have a Shadowwalk army that your opponent can't deal with and you just kill them with those Shadowwalks? It can happen. Or will you be able to bounce them back next turn, you're confident the opponent is not able to kill them? All sorts of variations are possible. It is sometimes also possible to simply grind out the opponent. We're talking about something like a warrior here with Haggat at the Witch. Because you have a bunch of minions, you play minions, you're in Haggad form, you get shaman spells. Sometimes those shaman spells are also enough to win the game. It doesn't always have to be about the Shadow Walk. And that's part of what makes this deck very scary. The deck has a lot of defenses. There's lightning storms, there's volcanoes, there's hexes, there's earth shock. There's Electra Storm Surge that can be used in aggressive matchups to double up your healing or double up your AoE. Or in control matchups where you really want to get to your combo, you can Electro Farsight to get double Farsight off. So there's a lot of defensive power in this deck, and then it has a couple of ways to win the game after that. There's also Mind Control decks, and remember, Shadowbook is also going to get the Mind Control deck battle cry, so. If you find yourself facing a full board and you shatter book, okay, you're going to get some of that board to your side. One other fancy trick that I like with this deck is to use Acolyte of Pain together with a Volcano. If you have 8 mana to spare and there's not too much held on the board, then that Volcano hits the Acolyte for 3, so you get to draw 3 cards from that one. Just a very flexible deck that can do a lot of things. Very powerful deck as well. It can beat acro decks, it can beat control decks, 
The worst time I have personally had with this deck has actually been against Maligos Druid, because Maligos Druid is pretty fast at drawing to their deck as well, and then if they get their combo pieces in time, and then they just kill you from 30. So that's something that Shadow cannot help you with, unless you're able to get the full combo faster than they do. When you mulligan with this deck, well, if there's ever a Prince Kelaset in a deck, you want to keep it in the mulligan, it's just so good. Other than that, you're typically looking for card draw, Acolyte of Pain, Mana Tide Totem, these are good cards to keep in general. And then it starts to depend a little bit. Against something like a warrior, I would keep Hagat at the Witch, I'm expecting a slow grindy matchup. If I knew I was facing something like a control warlock, I could also keep Hagata. If I'm facing something that's very aggressive, then it depends on what kind of aggressive. Lightning Storm is good against tokens, Volcano is good against many aggressive decks. Sometimes against aggression you're more looking for mind control deck, for example, good against Hunter. Samurai Chain Gang is good against almost everything that's aggressive. Or if you're facing something like a Warlock and you suspect it's an even lock, then you want to be looking for a Hex to deal with those 8-8 eight eight Giants. But overall, Keleset, card draw. Then depending on the matchup, if you're on the defense, look for the cards that are good for defense against that particular archetype. If you're playing against something very slow, then you can keep something more expensive, even a Hagata. It's a very powerful deck, and I have a bunch of gameplay material to show exactly how strong it can be. So, let's go take a look at that. I mean, Hagata, keeping Hagata is just too greedy, right? I believe so anyway. I think I need the early game. We have turned our curse into oh, it's an even spread. paladin, not an odd paladin. I'm surprised. I really thought this would be odd. But it's even. Alright. That's fine. I guess we're totaling up here. For starters. Let's see what happens. But I probably need to get the mana tide out there next turn. That seems likely. I need more cards. I can't protect the mana tide here though, but I just really need more cards in this position. Buffing up. Ah, just a corpse taker. Okay. It does have Wind Fury, which is kind of awkward. So if I play like Ching and he could just kill them both with the Corpse Taker. Or he could buff the Corpse Taker and go face with that. 7 to the Ching and 7 to face. Hmm, tricky. So what are my best responses? In addition to Ching and I could of course simply Hex the Corpse Taker, but I think I will need the Hex a little bit later. But if I play Life Drinker and he goes 14 to face with the Corpse Stick, that's pretty bad too. Casually, 12 hours plus a stream. <laughs> that, that's why the streams are so late right now. I'll try to get them on time, but... Time to mind control deck. That was a. That had, must have been a mistake, right? I could also simply Ziliax. Ziliax down the Corpse Taker. MC Tech may or may not hit one of the good ones. 50% to get a good one. Hmm. I don't think I want to Volcano yet. Ziliax would spend my mana effectively. Yeah, I think I can just Ziliax here. I got rid of the one with the Wind Fury. So then there's the 5 1 with the Divine Shield, obviously. And he can even buff it if he likes, but. It's no Wind Fury. It doesn't come to my face multiple times. Oh, well, there's more Wind Fury again. And this is a volcano turn. Let's just wipe that board. I'll still have enough mana to. well. To do Hex or to do Volcano or whatever. At least there's slides that have been targeted this card, yeah. 
their stat, but it's still not it's still not great. So I could ooze the weapon now, so that if it might miss a Serenite Chain Gang. And I think that's what I want to do here. My main question is, do I also want to hero power or not? I think I could hero power, because if I roll something like a Taunt Totem, it's pretty good. And if he, if the buff doesn't hit a Serenite Chain Gang, I can just Hex the buff away. Otherwise, he might have been able to set it up. If I let him proc the buff when he wants, he might be able to set it up to proc on a Serenite Chain Gang. Well, isn't this an obvious hex on the Pyromancer? No, it's not, because I can name C tech first. If I can steal the Pyromancer. Nah, couldn't get the Pyromancer. Fine, then we'll just hex it away. I think I'll hit there. I suppose this is fine. Okay, Valonir has been dealt with. That's that's something. Now I just hope that he can't kill my stuff, but I'm afraid he probably can, because this would have been nice to crumble back. Well, I'm being offered a chance to steal stuff again, and that is intriguing. Do I want to give it a try? Because I could play Kelas at Grumble and MC Tech. Or I could play Grumble, Kelas at MC Tech, actually. So that I would also have the Kelas at on the board. So many nice things. I think I'll grab the other Mind Control Tech. Battle Cry here. Let's do that one. I'll Grumble the MC Tech back to my hand. Let's steal more stuff. Mm, stealing the frog. Well, stealing the frog isn't terrible. It's still a taunt. And probably it's pretty bad, actually. But we'll go for that line. He had just used the pyromancer and the consecration. He has an equality. Does he have something like an avenging wrath here? Apparently not. And there's no avenging wrath. I'm completely fine with this. Just again. Okay, I don't mind again. Again's fine. I could life drinker twice. I could also get multiple Keleset Keleset procs, but I don't think I need to. I think double life drinker is fine. I haven't found any of my card draw. I'm a bit low on resources, but I suppose this will be fine. I don't want to spend a volcano yet. Actually, can't life drinker twice. I don't know how I how I count. But this should be okay still. Getting the totem out there. I'm at 23. He has eight on board. Three years and still going. Now finally a buff. But I have this hex over here, so I'm not too worried. Ooh, a far side, that's intriguing. I could hex this, but he hasn't used any other buffs yet. So I'm not concerned that he gets another buff. If I do hex healing rain, that would be seven mana. I could still do far sight. Yeah, let's do far sight here. Well that's much better than a hex in this position. No use to spend a hex now. And I can just uh, chuck this for free. Much better like this. And then I can kill off that again. Get rid of the big one. Drop a life drinker. 16, he has 3 on board. He could have something like 12 burst. And I suppose I can healing rain. I didn't necessarily have to, but I guess this is fine. There is the Acolyte in deck, there's the Farsight in deck, there's another Mana Tide. Okay, Starium a problem. So there's currently 
six, nine, twelve. There is enough health on the board to survive. Volcano. Obviously Hex and Volcano would make it. So there's 12, there's 19 health on the board. So up to 4 minions can survive a Volcano. He is a bit low on cards though. I suppose Volcano is fine. I should be able to kill a couple of these at least. I was even able to kill multiples. Only 2 minions survived. Up to 4 could have survived. And like two is probably pretty average. He has more buff cards remaining, so I wanted to hold on to the hex. In case there's another buff coming. And there is another buff coming. A gigantic buff even. I could take ten. He still has more buffs left in the deck. Why am I not successful in drawing cards? I do wonder. I guess I'll hex that though. I might hero power. I guess it's fine. We even get the token with the attack. I can kill the frog if he doesn't draw something that buffs it. Auto defense matrix give the frog divine shield. No, probably not. Alright, alright. Well, that's a card. I think I want to figure out if what he has over there first. I couldn't. Uh, that's probably fine. Do I want to kill this board now or do I wait? What do I gain if I wait? An interesting question. Because I can draw Blessing of Kings. Even if he draws Blessing of Kings, he can just hero power and play the Kings, so it's not that awesome. I think I'll wait a moment here before playing the Hagata. Because there could also be like something low health coming. That I might be able to deal with. Okay, I can't quite deal with that because of the Divine Shield. But this is probably already a sufficient position to play the Hagata anyway. Alright. Now we enter the Hagata land. I can't draw. For some reason I'm unable to draw. Double lightning storm. Let's say he finds Blessing of Kings. Which he could definitely find. Double lightning storm against Blessing of Kings. Means that the King's minion survives. I probably need to need to go with the lightning storm now. Mm, that turned out to be a repentance, and that's completely fine. Ooh, an earth shock. Ah, we lightning storm the board. Hmm, <laughs> high rolled there. So I didn't even need the Electra buff there. But okay, we got rid of the secret. So there's stuff like Avenging Wrath. There's another Steed. There's another Consecration. There is the Lich King, obviously. And he does get a Lich King card. But I can't deal with the Lich King either. I suppose I want to silence it. Just to stop the Lich King cards from coming. But I want to hit into it too. This might be a problem. Eight cards left in my deck, nine cards left in his deck. I still have a far sight left, I still have lightning storm left. There was chance for me to try to save hold on to Electra in order to try to find far sight or something. Well those were some good cards. Those really were some good cards. So that's fifteen damage. Only is another ten. I might actually lose this one. That's annoying when that happens. Maybe the volcano will help me. Maybe not. 15. Can he have another 13 from hand? That's really unlikely. Really 
there will still be the two six left over. I mean, I have never seen a shutter go into this very, very slow grind. Like this one. Has just never happened before. So do I just play the shutter book? I have played all I have played all the buff pieces. It doesn't kill the Lich King still. But if I volcano Yeah, I have to go with the Shadow Book and see if it whiffs or not. If it if it whiffs, then I it actually whiffed. My Shadow Book actually whiffed, so I'm in the process of losing this game. Potentially anyway. Well, that was annoying. It actually whiffed. Both Saranai Chain Gangs activated after Zola and Crumble. But I've seen both equalities, so he needs to top, and both consecrations, so he needs to top deck Avenging Wrath. In order to be able to simply win from here. Alright. Five cards left, but none of them are really important. So I can trade one of these into the Lich King, yes. Yes, one of these goes into the Lich King. And then I will give another Shadow Rock Wind Fury, right? I can push 14 to face that way. I think that is correct. Let's give this fellow Wind Fury. Actually, the Wind Fury Shadow Rook is not going to hit into that one. Wind Fury Shadow Rook is hitting face. So it hits face and it hits face. Then I'll Healing Rain and Acolyte. So I get the Shadow Rook into a decent position. I have the Acolyte, but the qualities are gone. He's at one. I think we still got this, even though the Shadow Rook whiffed. He can make me draw five cards. So he will, I can draw my entire deck. But, I mean, it doesn't matter, right? Because it's not like he can just fatigue me out anyway. That's just not enough damage. It doesn't matter if you make me draw my deck, because you're at one. I'm still going to draw my deck and play the Shadow Walk. Let's try that. I mean, sometimes you can grind them out with Hagata, but maybe not with this deck. Definitely Ooze. You would cut the Ooze for a Nerd Shock. Intriguing. I thought Ooze was really good, like facing Ord Paladins and you could just take away every weapon. I don't think I want to tow them up. I don't think I benefit from tow them. But this is actually not an Ord Paladin. This could be like a fatigue. This is actually going to be Dead Man's Hand Paladin. <laughs> not Paladin, but Dead Man's Hand Warrior. And that means that they can actually beat my Shadow Walk. That's worrying. I don't like them beating my shudder walk. So I thought I was being handed a free win against the Nord Warrior with the shudder walk, but I mean, Dry Whisker Armor and infinite amounts of Dry Whisker Armorers and the Cornet Sentries can actually win this game. I would make him draw six. He would burn a couple of cards. Is that a good move? Because if he burns Azalina, or if he burns... Yeah, he has to burn Azalina, right? If he burns Azalina, I win. I'll go for it. We're experimenting. That's what we're doing here. Hofind Warlock. Hofind is nice. I get to burn a couple of cards. That was Azalina. I, I actually burnt the Azalina. He can't shudder walk back. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, Hearthstone. Big spells. It could be big spells. It could also be Murlocs. But it's probably big spells. I suppose I can drop a Glacial Shard on the board. Let's see. Yep, that's big spells alright. So what do I want to do in this matchup? I probably want to far sight with the Electra if at all possible. This one will trade. I have the option to coin Zola. Why not just ping the Glacial Shard? I don't know. I really don't know. I was thinking of bouncing the, that back, but I didn't want to spend the coin. These cards are pretty useless. I guess I have to farsight once here. Because I don't have anything useful in my hand. I need to find some draw. Oh, that's that can be nasty. Now I have to be careful about that one. But I have a glacial shard, so it's, it should be fine. Because if it's frozen clone or anything... Why do they always pick runes? Every single mage I have faced has always picked runes. But I still don't know why. I still don't know why they always pick runes. Runes isn't even that great. Go for another one. High rolling. Nice. So far so good. I'm alright. Then I can play a life drinker. I like where this is going so far. That might be a little bit scary though. He probably has removal. I mean, he, he has some kind of spell out there so that the minions get to connect to face. Almost certainly. I still think it's a good idea to chain gang and soul at chain gang. This one will hit over there. I have the Hagata. Well, that was a surprise. So we didn't have a better... Oh! Oh, you don't want to do that going into turn 8! I mean, come on, we're in top 1000. And you're messing around. Why? What's going on? Another Astromancer, though. Much better. Okay. Suppose I need to hex the 512. That's a little bit scary. I want to remove that damage. Spill stone. Not useful right now. I'd like to use the acolyte with a volcano. That's the thing. I'll just heal up with the Ziliax a little bit here. Generate some more random spells. Okay, so far so good. I really wanted to use these with Electra. I can't seem to find my Electra. I could make two Acolytes. What if he makes me draw six cards? Oh, there's no way that he can actually make me draw six cards. He can make me draw none. That's pretty difficult too. To 
making the copy. I'm tapping one of these to draw a card here. Because I like cards. Now I have the Electra Farsight available. As long as I don't accidentally die. Because it's possible that I might accidentally die somehow. Down to 17. Do I have to hex the Astromancer? Oh, I hate that. But I have a hex left in the deck too. I'm overloaded now, so I can't play Electrofar side hex. Which is kind of what I want to be doing. I think I'll just hex and play the mana tide. I could draw one card. If I wait until I have played Electra, I could draw two. Or I could draw a copy of the card. I think drawing one is fine. I'll kill off the frog. I mean, they're definitely ways that I might be able to lose. Seven cards in hand, ten cards in deck. Now I also have the Electra Healing Rain if I really, really want to heal for 24. Mech Mage, Control Priest. I actually played Warlock Murloc a lot in vanilla. I liked Warlock Murloc. Warlock Murloc was fun. Three, six. I'm Volcano can deal with this board. I could also Mind Control tech. Actually, I think I like my MC tech here. But he has plenty of removal, so I would have to hit Zilliax for that to really be worth it. Volcano, on the other hand, overloads me. Three, four, six damage. I'm still safe if I play MC tech. I'm, it's not like I'm dying. That's MC tech. That's not very powerful. I think I'll also Electra Farsight here. Now Urchuk there and I'll zap that one. Let's do something like this. I think this is fine. Now I have a 6 mana Shadow Walk. Still a Chain Gang, still a Life Drinker unplayed. Grumble unplayed of course. <laughs> Who wouldn't get MC into Electra, yeah. I thought that was the best too. Who wouldn't get a Lich King from Stonehill? So I'm going to hex the Lich King, right? He might have a regular Lich King in the deck as well. I could hex the Lich King. Eight cards in hand right now. I don't need more, more MC attacks, I think. Oh, but if I hex the Lich King, I cannot grumble. It's probably fine. I just hex the Lich King here. Play a mana tide. When Earth and Might. Well, Electro would be an elemental. Yeah, I think we're rocking the Earth and Might there. Seven cards in hand, this is acceptable. Cosmic Anomaly. I mean, I know he has a Dragon's Fury in hand. I just want the Serenite Chain Gang. Just want to be able to play that one before I go for the Shudder Walk place. I have a lot of minions in hand, though. Is there a risk that I just grab so many spells that I can't get rid of? I guess that's always a chance. All right, we get to see a little bit of a big spell. That's still fine. My 
hand is a bit full. That is awkward. It's time to play a life drinker. Beaker lightning, one damage to all minions. I can probably use that one this turn. I could have it deal three damage if I like. I don't. I can overload now. You should try to crumble the Serenite. Yes, yes, that's that's what I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for the Serenite. And I'm trying to figure out how to do that without having too much stuff in my hand. I can play the MC tech too. No, I'll just do this. Eight cards in hand. This is acceptable. But yeah, I am trying to trying to get the crumble on the Serenite. And then go for the Shadow Walk. Running out of cards a little bit here though. If I don't top deck the Serenite, the next turn is some, going to be some kind of some kind of spell unloading turn. Oh, a Frostmorn I see. Intriguing. Now I can give him the 4 tree. With spell damage. But what is he going to really use that spell damage for? More volcanoes again. I guess this turn I need to overload myself. I'm just worried a little bit. But I mean, like, what if he has Dragon Caller Alana? Double Volcano can deal with it, but not much else can. So if I'm overloaded all the time, I just Volcano and Ice Fishing here. The problem here is that if he plays Alana now. Then that's bad for me. And there comes the Alana. Just when I said that that would be bad. Because now I'm overloaded a little bit. Beaker lightning in the volcano. That's fifth that's nineteen damage. Actually he hadn't played that many spells yet. This goes just fine. Figured lightning into another volcano. I can also play the Kale Asset afterwards. Okay. Two cards left in the deck. One of them is the Serenite Chain Gang. Okay, I guess I don't mind those fellows. There's the chain gang. I wanted to use this with Grumble. Next turn I will be all out of cards. Do I have enough time to play chain gang Grumble? And then the Shudder Rock the following turn. Because I could also play chain gang and Shudder Rock on the same turn. My hand is not too full to do that. I think I can afford it still. That's five coming to face. That's tricky. I think I can afford it. Let's see how this turns out. That's the second key, Smith. And isn't it a bit early? I think this should be fine still. He gets some ski smiths and he gets some chain gangs and it's fine. But I can grumble. I actually have 9 cards in hand. Isn't that a problem? I guess it's not because the Shadow Rock only costs 6 mana. This should still be fine. The Shadow Rock AOE is going to kill everything.
9 cards in hand, so I want to reduce the number of cards in hand a little bit before playing the Shudderwook. I don't have to. But I only get one Shudderwook back. I want to get rid of some cards here. Well, one card. That's the best I can do. Okay, I missed the grum I missed the grumble. I will hit, still hit the Zola, but I'm overloaded. So now I'm overloaded because I played the spell. So I can't play the Shadow Rock next turn again. Is there a way for me to fatigue out of this? Hopefully not. So I must not fatigue more. I can play the chain gang out there. What if he doesn't kill it though? He could just choose not to kill it. So I need to use some spells now. And not the chain gang. Because if he doesn't kill it then there's a chance that my things can whiff. Here comes the Jaina. And then we get another try with the Shudder Walk. This time it doesn't whiff. There's the Zola effect. But there's still room for the Grumble effect too. So now it's over. Okay. I think I can try with something like this. Do I open with the Glacial Shard or not? I think I don't. Let's see. I call this tick tier. Um, maybe. So this is not a Zulok. Is this a Contra Warlock? He can burn my stuff. If he burns my good stuff, I will lose. No. He's going to have Gnome Ferrado in there. Ah, just the Kelaset. I don't mind the Kelaset. I never liked the Kelaset anyway. True story. He probably has something that kills the mana tide. But nothing on the board. I think we'll go with this fellow here. Well, that's a nice Ciliax. So do I really need it for anything? I don't think I do, right? We just jam, jam the storm and hit him in the face a little bit. Let's try this. I would need to draw cards. I have not been very good at drawing cards with this variant. I think it has been exceedingly difficult. Let's apply a little bit of pressure. Why do we never hero power? Why would I hero power? Hero power puts bad minions on the board and then they will hurt my volcanoes and they will hurt my grumbles and all sorts of stuff. Pressing slow decks all day. Oh, I didn't know. Didn't know that that was something. Some kind of a thing. So Marcus, any how you, you will be alive? Mm, about one hour. Smirk is around one hour more. No, my beautiful Urchok destroyed from my deck and getting me closer to my Shadow Rock. Actually, that's a pretty good thing. 
I hope he'll give some minions for project. You're talking about me? I have plenty of minions for project. Are these MC texts are completely useless here. Don't you worry about me. I'm fine. I don't think I'll storm and... Oh, that kind of a hit. I might Ciliax. Ciliax seems fine. Let's Ciliax that one down. Still project will hit Shadowbook anyway. Yeah, we'll see. MC decks are here. Oh no, he has a Void Lord. Oh yes, I have a Hex. Yep, that's a Hex, alright. Quack, quack. And a Mana Tide. What do you think about Sandbinder? Sandbinder's nice. I don't really know why I don't, I don't have it. I just picked up something that seemed decent. Alright, Life Drinker Crumble time. Let's try this approach. I didn't want to hold Crumble in my hand for a long time because that would give him more good project hits. But I didn't want to give him good project hits if I can avoid it. Don't burn Shatterwalk. Didn't burn Shatterwalk. Ooh, a Serenite Chain Gang. Yeah, I like Serenite Chain Gangs. Let's play one out there. Do I need to play something more? No, not really. These fellows are fine in hand. Black Knight. Well, burning the volcano. No, oh, now we'll have to play an MC tech. But I still have Electra and I have a life drink, so there's still some stuff left. Oh, now I could do Electra Far Sight. I think we Electra Far Sight here. Let's grab some stuff. Well, that's a two mana volcano. Five, seven, ten, four. Too much health. How many minions do I want to hold on to? And we're getting to a position where I just play the Shadow Rock as soon as I draw it. And we're really entering territory where Shadow Rock is just going to be played when drawn. And there's going to be enough life drinkers to just kill him. It's really getting close to that point. Okay, demonic project number one. That's all good. Just empty your hand to pretend that you have Shatterwook. Does he run double demonic project? Some of them do. Might be a little bit unlikely. Well, that's a Shadow Walk. I have not found the second Chain Gang yet. So now I have to ask myself, do I feel lucky? There's only one Grumble effect, so it's 50-50 right now with the Shadow Walk. It's 50-50 right now with the Shadow Walk. There's one Grumble, one Chain Gang in the pool. I could have three Life Drinkers, so I could deal nine. No, it's not lethal, it's 12 with the Life Drinker in the Shadow Walk. I think I'll wait. If he finds another demonic project, he has one in three to destroy the Shadow Rock. But if he doesn't heal now, then he just dies to life drink a Shadow Rock because there is nine in this Shadow Rock. Splendid. That's a win. didn't even need to grumble to succeed. I want to find card draw. Yeah, rather than any of these pieces. <laughs> Good night, Trek. Okay, let's try to make some good decisions this time. 
definitely had some issues with the Hagata. Might need to try to avoid that. I was forced to play that in that game though. So there's that. Okay, another druid. Let's probably talk waggle or something. I think I can drop the coin here. Would be nice to grumble the chain gang. I think it's pretty unlikely anyway. Let's go for a life drinker. Second wild growth, okay. chain gang and try to apply some pressure here but this would have to survive two turns to be crumbled so I think it's pretty unlikely yes starfall makes me think talk waggle at least it makes talk waggle slightly more likely I think I'm actually going to hex this and push face a little bit more because this might give me a crumble target for next turn. Can't crumble the chain gang obviously but if I can crumble a life drinker I'm happy. I also get a 7-7 seven, seven on the board. And I'm on 7 cards, so he cannot meal me even if he naturalizes the Grumble. Oh, it's an ultimate infestation. Powerful stuff. I really think this is Togwaggle, so I would have to find my... Shudderwok. I'd have to find my Shudderwok before he can pull off his combo. I don't have any healing here. I'm gonna have the option to hex this. That will keep the crumble healthy. If I hex and mana tide. Yeah, he cannot mill me if I hex and mana tide. I think I'll go for that line. Do I hit face before I hex? Even with a zero one. He could buff it with the branching paths potentially. I think it's fine. Go for that I hex this one. But I play the mana tide. And he cannot mill me with the naturalize. And I try to draw fast in order to find the shadow walk. Also putting on a little bit of pressure on his face. But he has 10 mana and he has 10 cards so... He has the tools. Opal armor. Interesting choice. I was concerned he would do something completely different. Oh, that was interesting too. That was really interesting actually. I really like to Electro Farsight. Faceless Manipulator, so this is actually Maligos. Despite the Starfall, because Maligos uses Faceless. Oh. That's intriguing. And I've used both hexes already. He could just drop Maligos next turn on the board and I couldn't answer it. This became really interesting all of a sudden. I think Starfall in Ardio Maligus deck. Yeah, it is sometimes used but it's much more common in Togwaggle. But Faceless Manipulator is not used in Togwaggle. So this has to be Maligos. There's my Shudder Rook. I have had one Sarah Knight, one Life Drinker, one Grumble. No Zola, 50% Shudder Rook at the moment. Feels a little bit weak. On the other hand, dying to Maligos combo is, of course, also quite awkward. 
And now there's a chance that I die next turn. On the other hand, his hand was almost full of cards, so can he really land the Dream Battle Florist discount on the right minion? It just seems so unlikely. With such a full hand. He had only played Faceless and one Tyrant. I don't have the ooze to remove the twig. That's a bit of a bummer. Going with the Shadow Walk, oh, I would really like to get this Chain Gang at least, if nothing else. Seven cards in hand. I guess that's acceptable. I'll play the Hagata. Get some armor going. But I can also freeze his face to delay the twig. Would Shadow still be good without Hagata and Electra? Uh, it's definitely possible, yeah. It's a usable card without them, absolutely. There's the far side that I've been looking for. Far side, let's draw two cards. That's my ooze. That's good. We take away the twig. I can use some useless stuff. Get rid of that one. Just hit with the glacial shard, right? Do I play the Acolyte? Do I have another two turns? It's like a very key question here. I think I might have to go off next turn. His Florist is likely to have whiffed. Because he had so many cards in hand. But who really knows? It's still just 50%. And if I play Volcano, I cannot play Shudderbook the following turn. I think I'll have to try that anyway. 50% is just so bad. I don't like 50% odds. I accidentally filled my hand. I didn't count this properly. I did need to use the Urchok. Now I can burn the Shadow Rock. No, I can't burn the Shadow Rock, obviously. Shadow Rock is safe. Oh, he did manage to land on the Maligos. Okay, then I just died. But then it didn't actually even matter. If I had went for the 50%, he would still have this turn. And because this kills, so... Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more.